ask. And of course, no one is under obligation, but I would love it if people were willing to share their cameras. That's a, easier to read faces. It's a good chance for us to see other humans besides the ones living in our house. So please, if you're willing, share your camera. If you aren't, uh, that's fine too, but we're all here. <clears throat> and everyone looks better than I do right now. So please join the party. All right. For those that are hearing my voice and that are here, my name is Larry Mills. I am the uh, VP of Outreach for Fairfax County Council of PTA. <clears throat> um, we're also joined by uh, Kara Jenkins, the president. She's waving her hand right there. Uh, Michelle Leet, one of the officers is here as well, waving her hand. And Hamid Hamir Munir is here somewhere uh, as well. <clears throat> but we're not the focus here. We are here for all of you. And the topic today is um, frankly just finding people are having difficulty finding officers uh, filling vacancies uh, for this coming year uh, and this current year, and frankly, forever, right? I think that is the perpetual issue of the PTA is, can we get enough people? And more importantly, can it not be the same for people? So those are some of our issues uh, <clears throat> there. Uh, this for, The format here is really kind of open. Uh, again, I, besides the basic layouts of what we're going to discuss, uh, it is your time to share, to ask, to pick our brains, to share your experiences, to share each other's experiences as well. Um, we have, a, I think we have a good sm uh, smattering of PTAs, PDSAs, middle schools, elementary schools. Um, I think we even have some high schools on here. So we have a good cross-reference and cross-cut cross of uh, PTSAs and PTAs here. So uh, to also mimic my, our illustrious president here, she always starts off by reading the PTA mission statement. So I will read that first line as well, every meeting. Um, PTA's mission is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children, which is obviously why we're all here. And you wouldn't be here right now if you didn't support that ideology. So <clears throat> first off, does anybody have anything immediately pressing? And again, everybody has the capacity to, to self unmute. Um, if it gets rowdy, which I doubt, uh, then obviously Kara can be the rowdy police. But outside of that, anybody have anything they'd like to share to begin with? Uh, questions, comments, concerns that we can all benefit from? Oh, Debbie Kilpatrick's with us as well. Hi, Debbie. Anyone? Hey, hey guys. Hey, hey, guys. All right, so let me give you a little bit, quick little background. So I, I my, my background outside of this is uh, politics and sales. So I will talk for an hour straight and not even lose my breath. So if you all want to share, please, by all means, do. Otherwise, I will monopolize the entire time. Uh, and I won't, it, won't all, it won't all be beneficial, I guarantee you that. Um, I will say this, a little couple things. I think that the biggest resource you have for finding officers and volunteers is you. You yourself in your own community. Um, I, I have, my own experience has been that I've dealt with not being able to find officers as well. Um, Mostly because a lot of parents don't know what PTA is. They don't know what it entails. They think that they have to show up to meetings and do all those bake sales and all that stuff that they don't necessarily understand sometimes. Um, but they do know who I am and they know what, what I am and what I'm about. And they may not want to necessarily join the PTA, but Brett, will you help Larry? That's something they're willing to do. Um, listen, I'll, I'll support you all the way. I'll do everything I can to help you, but I need somebody to help me with this. Would you do this with me? Everybody has their crew. You have everybody on this phone call right now has a crew of someone. That's your first base right there. Who is your crew and then what's their crew to get your own people in there, right? It sounds a little clicky, but sometimes you have to get there to get to get started, right? Michelle, you had your hand raised, please. I sure do. Um, I, you know, I think that like everyone, you also get this, um, the ripple effect of you have to see who's willing to do what. And then, you know, if that person does this, then the next one does that and so forth. Um, I'm facing the challenge of, I'm anticipating and dreading having to have conversations with people who I'm, we would prefer not have return. Yes. Um, and if anybody has successfully and least painfully had those conversations, um, I'm open to any good lines <laughs> to use. Right. Anybody else by show of hands have that issue? Because I think that's come up a couple of times. Right. It's not an issue of not having the people. It's the person you have may not be the ideal fit. Um, well, I mean, obviously, the first thing is, obviously, give horse in the mouth, right? You're having somebody. Oh, Deanna, do you have, please, you can self-unmute if you want, please. Sorry, I was trying to figure out how to raise 
Um, yes, so Michelle, I'm in a situation like that. And um, both this person and another person have decided they want to run for president. Um, and it has people nervous. So I have some questions about the process later. But one thing that I found working with the person that's maybe the less ideal um, candidate was to focus on the thing that they're really good at. So this particular person considers themselves really good at advocacy about a certain issue and encouraging them to think about ways that they can be like the advocacy chair or to help the PTA with that specific issue that this person has and just try to kind of like focus them a little bit in where their strengths are. And we'll see what happens, but that's something I tried. Absolutely. I think that it's, uh, it's very easy to, <clears throat> what, what I try to do is I, I try to remove myself from it um, because we, we are the PTA for every kid, every parent, every teacher, regardless of whether we like them or agree with them or anything like that. So, and I always imagine that um, somebody somebody loves that person too. So there's a there's a group of folks that is exactly like whoever that other person is that that person is that voice for. And I think that it's important to have that different style voice, whatever you want to call it, on the board as well. So I would definitely never sway it away. Um, but it'd be nice to have some balance. Karen. Uh, yes, I had a separate question. So if anybody else had a follow up on that one, I'll wait my turn. But if we're on to a next topic, then somebody else has a follow up to that yeah, one. Trina. Hey, Deanna, we had the same problem. We had two people running for president. Um, I would suggest to you what, what we did is just go super strictly by the book, you know, writing up why they want to be president, distributing that to everybody, you know, everything we did completely by the book and just kept it very professional, you know, no discussion, no, you know, back channel nonsense, just, you know, by the book, all the rules that you're supposed to do when there's a situation that two people are running and it worked out great. You know, the person who everybody really felt comfortable with and thought knew best was the person who, you know, won the election. So I'm sorry, cause mm -hmm. I know it's hard, but you well, know, that's I the thing. we went from having nobody, we were afraid nobody was going to do it to then two people. So that's a good thing in yeah. that sense. Our nominating committee decided to do a rubric approach where they decided before considering any candidates what they felt was important for each position. So they have something transparent like what you're saying um, that they can come back to if people ask like, well, what, how, why did you pick one or another that there was some kind of format that they used. I don't know if anybody's tried that before, but that's the approach that that committee, I'm not on the nominating committee gladly. Um, so, but that's a way they were trying to be, you know, like upfront about it and make sure it was objective and um, hopefully, yeah, that'll work out for them. Uh, before we get to Karen's question, I think that it's important that everyone that's involved in their elections has figured out, and Debbie and I encountered this last night, exactly what that is gonna look like. Um, in the old world, you walked in a room, you filled out a ballot, somebody counted them and then you moved on. I mean, nine times out of 10, right? You, you don't have the luxury of that right now because you're not meeting a person. Um, but some people still want to be able to cast their ballots in private. So do you have a, do you have Google Forms set up? Have you have you thought about the infrastructure of how it's going to work? Um, do you have a somehow non-partial uh, tallying person? Maybe it would be a your principal or an assistant principal, someone that doesn't have as much vested interest in the outcome necessarily. Um, maybe the outgoing president that is literally leaving the school that be somebody that would count. I don't know. The point is that you definitely want to think about how that election is going to have it happen and try and anticipate those roadblocks that will present themselves because in this digital age, it is a little bit different than when we were just uh, sitting in a room together. And I just wanted to add, Larry, that um, <clears throat> in our discussions last night, we've been having a few with different schools, uh, school PTAs and PTSAs, uh, that you know some are having multiple people interested in the same position, which is always a good thing. Um, so, but one of the things that did come out is um, some of the candidates didn't really understand what that position actually was all about. Somebody had just said, you should apply. And so they did, 
but they didn't really have a good understanding of what it is. And I think uh, as um, I loved how Deanna, you know, your nominating committee has a rubric. I think it's important that we have job descriptions very relevant to exactly what that job entails. Our bylaws are usually very um, broad, are very uh, short, right? Especially for like the vice presidents. Not presidents is well laid out, secretary, treasurer, well laid out. It's the vice presidents that uh, are very brief. And I do think as uh, when you do your beginning of your term, it's a good idea to have a job descriptions for that particular officer as they go through and then that becomes the norm. And I do think people need to be able to understand the time it, it's going to take them. And I know everybody on this call will say, I, if I can do it, you can do it, right? Because you're doing it, <laughs> you're actually doing it. Uh, but uh, some people are very hesitant uh, either lack of self-confidence because they've never had a PTA role before, or just they feel like I'm working full time. I have a family, you know, I have my um, other commitments and how do I squeeze out a little bit more time to take on a leadership role? So I do think having um, the job description and having a personal conversation to say, no one expects you to do everything. I mean, you do what fits yourself, but these are the actual responsibilities that we really need to have you commit to. And that's all you can do. And if people feel they can't commit, they won't commit, but at least they have an honest um, introduction to what that position. And the good news is with PTA, you can always have training. There is always somewhere to learn something. And if people are hesitant to take on a position, please say, believe me, you will have the available training and resources that you need. And, you know, that's at the council level, the district, state level. So there's always, you know, because we don't want people to feel like they can't be successful they can be successful and we have the resources to help support that. Thank you, Deb. Uh, Karen Horvath, please. Thank you. Um, I have two questions. Um, one will be very short, hopefully yes or no. And the second one is a follow-up um, to what Moose uh, Kirkpatrick, Kirkpatrick was just uh, talking about. But my first question is, um, we are an elementary school PTA, I am the president. Um, we have reflections that is an empty position coming up. Is that something that has to be filled? No. Not at all. <gasps> uh, so, so, for, so for clarity, the only seats you have to have filled, uh, if I'm not mistaken, are your president, your treasurer, and your secretary. So somebody to record the message, what happened, someone to run it, and someone to handle the money. Everything else is subjective to whatever you can accomplish. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Uh, second question is, yes, we are having trouble and we had trouble last year finding a VP um, for those reasons that you said, Ms. Kilpatrick. Um, I am, uh, first of all, considering uh, having two VPs. We are a very large elementary school. We have uh, 900 and some odd students. We have two VP principals. Um, so I'm considering asking two people, even though we can't get one, but it seems as if, I don't know what I do as president. I do everything, right. but it's hard to define that vice president's job. And I think people are afraid of it. Um, I, th I think that the, so, by name of officer, right? Your bylaws, as they are set up, will define how many officers you can have right now. There is no limit to the number of chairs you can have. Whatever committee or chair you might think you need. So you may not have room in your bylaws for a second officer, 
but you can have a chair of activities. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And that person just handles activities. So there are ways to get people involved without that. And to some degree, that can be a bit of a, uh, a little bit of a trick, I guess, right? Because the title vice president may be daunting to someone, um, but most people are willing to be a co-chair. They don't even want to be the single chair, but if you're both co-chair of, of finance and you help the treasurer and the treasurer doesn't even have a calculator, then that's fine. It doesn't matter. The point is that now you have a co-chair is getting it done. So committees are a way to broaden your exposure to people to make it a little bit softer. And then that also broadens your reach. So there's your pool for your next officers and whoever they know as well. Because again, it's if I bring five, then they bring five. Obviously, next thing you know, you have a bunch of folks uh, there. Anybody else want to comment on, on Karen's question, comment? Kitty? We have, a, we have a vice president for volunteers oh, and a vice president for uh, communication. And that's how they divide up the duties. So someone to find, vice, volu vice. find more volunteers and yeah, vice president for volunteers. And then a vice president for communication handles the uh, weekly comms, emails, that kind of stuff. Okay. IT stuff. Yeah. And um, so. just to just to throw it out there, that has to be changed through your bylaws. And, and um, we did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we did that last year. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So to, to ju jump in real fast, and I will let Debbie clarify a little bit, but any amendments to your bylaws, um, there is a process for that. There is a bit of a, uh, I guess, a hold or a moratorium on bylaw changes right now because of how the state is restructuring how the bylaws are done. So. VAPTA, and tell me if I'm wrong, Debbie, is not accepting amendments to bylaws currently. So you could not add an officer right this very second. By the way, Debbie, please, or Hamid, jump in if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, well, from my understanding, and Michelle, uh, of course, is on the executive committee and probably has more in-depth in information than we do, but uh, we just have heard that some of our local units have submitted their bylaws and the response because they haven't received a response from the bylaws committee, uh, whether approval or not approval or whatever. Uh, the information we've received is that the um, state is looking at uh, reformatting a, a new template for bylaws. So they've kind of, they've made it to where you won't be penalized by not revising your bylaws until June anyway, because of COVID. So, so I can uh, I can um, jump in here really quick, Deb, just because I just had a conversation with Pam Croom oh, this good. week. Um, so good. yes, Virginia PTA is not accepting amendments to bylaws right now. So if you were to try to do this work to add new officers, it's not going to go through. So don't do the work right now. The idea is that the bylaws are going to be written in a way that they won't ever have to be adjusted by you guys ever again. So they're not accepting anything. So if right now for Karen, for your particular issue, I would go with Larry's suggestion and get committee chairs for now because you're not gonna be able to get it approved. I'm gonna turn my mic off now. Yeah. Uh, Kitty, do you have a comment to that point? Well, what I wanted to say is I agree with everything Larry's saying too um, regarding the more the merrier approach to Sometimes it really makes sense. It, it, it seems less daunting to people if they can have a partner in crime, you know, in terms of whatever that, that task is that they need to do. Um, and it also really adds to the bench strength for your uh, PTA organization so that you, when you go into your nominating time the following year, you, you have more um, known people to, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, recruit into a, a you know a new position um, and people they know, and you can broaden a, you know your um, your diversity. I think as well, if you're able to continually reach out and grow that group, so it's not such a small. You use the word click earlier, and in and, and it is in a good way sometimes because you know you do want to work with people you know you can work with, but we also realize that it's really great to have as many people as you can find a position for, and it really does help spread it out. But the one caveat, and I'll, then I'll stop talking, is you have as as president, it's important then to be able to to make sure you're managing all the people and and letting them do their jobs, and um, but also keeping track. And so that's been a challenge. We have uh, our board is over forty people, mm. um, so but it's great. Everyone is really excellent and does and does what they're you know what they set out to do. So I've been really really fortunate. Awesome. Uh, Thank Anali, you. please. 
Oh, hi, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, we're a very small elementary school. We only have um, about 200 families. Um, and the thing is, is that we have, so our, the way we structured our board was we have all the chairs, but the chairs, we, we just have an aversion to politics aversion to being part of an official PTA responsibility. So people are really happy to be chairs of committees that do things. So we have for the various activities, the chairs, but they don't want to be involved in the board. Um, and then we have VPs of members. So basically half of our positions are VPs. So we have VP fundraising, VP membership, VP program as a way to try and share the burden, but still nobody wants to be president. I think part of that reason is because this year we just didn't have any, you know, we had um, no newsletter writer, so I had to write the newsletter. Right. We had very few activities and all of most of our active members ended up leaving the school or going homeschooling. So I ended up running most of the activities. And so everyone sees me doing everything and I'm like, that's not normal. Right? right, and that's not normally what a president does. And so nobody wants to be president because they're like, oh, I don't want all that work. <laughs> And I just don't know how well, why are you, to get that message. Well, why are you doing everything? Just let things drop. You don't have well, to have a newsletter. Yeah. You don't have so that to. That is right? one option. You just, that's that what is. I did, right? Daddy, Daddy, have a tough love, right? No, I don't want to do that option. That's, so you have that choice, right? You have the choice of letting everything drop and not doing anything, or you have the choice of, and we didn't do, we didn't do like, actually we didn't do three quarters of what we do because normally we are a very active PTA. We just did the bare minimum. We did things like fundraise for other schools. Um, we did fundraise for the community. So we did that kind of thing, fundraise for the American Heart Association. And we so, did like uh, one fundraiser for us. <laughs> so so now I, th I, think, I think that is, to me, that's the key. Um, remind, and obviously we have, let me go backwards. Social media, Facebook and whatnot, is not just for posting uh, poor medical advice. It's also for reaching out to the community. And sometimes what I want to be able to do is remind them who you are, who we are, and what we do, uh, and what they'll lose. And it's almost threatening to some extent. So we actually did have to do this in my elementary school in the sense that if we don't have a president, this is what we're going to lose, X, Y, Z. I did that. Yeah. And, and I did that. Yeah. But the problem is, is that I got then this like crazy, I shouldn't say that. I got this lady who really <laughs> wants to like fight everybody. She decided she got really active this year because she just was so angry with Fairfax County and so angry with our school administration. And yeah. then she was like, oh, great. I can become president and I can like fight from that platform. And I was like, no, that's not. So I, so I did manage to talk to her and I actually used, oh, somebody mentioned it, the strategy that another parent of mine said, because I was like panicking as Cara and I think you know, Larry. And then um, they said, well, if she really likes advocacy, why don't you make her the school board liaison? Then she can report on everything the school board does and she's focused on that whole side. So I did that. So I deflected her from the president, but I'm still left with- Without no, a person, right. And right. No, all the people, there are lots of people who are really, who are committed and active, but nobody wants that responsibility. And so I, I saw um, Karen said um, about having a president elect. We don't have anything in our bylaws for that, but is that possible that you kind of have like a past president helping to take some of that like administrative burden? Because I think people are worried about that side of things. So, well, as Karen mentioned very, very early on, before anybody was on, th there's no PTA police per se. Um, so there has to be somebody in the role, uh, but I think we've all, maybe not all, but we've all been part of PTAs or uh, organizations where the, the boss is not the one doing any of the work. So as long as somebody is in the seat, then you are a viable, um, unit and the VPs can do all the work. So it's, that's not, a, that's not a solution. That's a bandaid. Um, so there can be a name of person there. Um, but I also think that, um, I think sometimes people will surprise us, and I, maybe I'm being a little Pollyannish about it, but um, once they're in that position and there's some degree of accountability to all the parents, all the families, all the teachers, I, I, people tend to, uh, I don't know, I, my experience is they, they, they tend to step up a little bit. And if they don't, then people pick up the slack. But there has to be a person in that seat. Again, I know it's not an automatic answer. I, I didn't have any magic pill, of course, but I think that the threat of loss of what families could lose by doing it um, could definitely 
uh, be that. There's one other issue, and I wonder if other PTA presidents are dealing with this, which is, so most of our families are dual career, everybody's working. Some of them, you know, parents, first of all, it's the mothers who tend to be part-time working as opposed to the fathers. And so this is just a shift towards women only as opposed to a mix of women and men on the PTA. And most of, and I asked like my network, I asked all the board, current board members, only two of them, but I asked them for their network and nobody wants to ask their friends because they don't want to, you know, feel like they're pushing burdens onto their friends. I don't know what to do. Please somebody else speak to that because I can't relate to that part. I will guilt a friend into it in a heartbeat, so. We, we definitely have that <laughs> at our, in our board, like everybody was really hesitant to ask their friends for fear of losing friends, I don't know. But um, we used the nominating committee as a tool. So like we said, hey, we think these people would re be really good at these positions if you could reach out to them and see their interests so that you're just helping to identify the people, which like the nominating committee felt was the hardest part. Um, so if your board can identify who might be good candidates, then they could be the ones to do the ask. Um, and the thing that I told the board too is just to be really careful, like not to have the same people be the ones that were, you know, like I, I guess I feel a little differently than some of the things that were said to try to not have it only be your friends. Um, and that when we picked our nominating committee, we tried to make sure like multiple grades, ethnicities were involved so that it could kind of go further than the board's typical circles. And like they really emphasized diversity and like making sure everybody knew that they were welcome to run and things like that. So um, I just wanted to give that idea too. Larry, can I add a couple of things? Please, Amit, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Number one, one of the misconceptions is that if, if your child doesn't go to that school, then you cannot be a member of that PTA. That's not true. Anybody from the community can be a member of that PTA. As long as they're paying their dues, they can be a member and they can also be an officer at the, at the PTA board. So I think one of the discussions that she was talking about earlier, um, I'm sorry, I forgot her name, but she was saying that if I'm being a previous president, can I still chime in and stuff? Yes, you can. Um, because as long as you are the member, you will remain a member of the PTA. You can still be part of that PTA. So just want to clarify that aspect. So if you want to get involved and, and stay involved in that school, even though your child move on or, or you're not part of it, just be a member of that PTA and be involved. That's, that's perfectly all right. Definitely. Thank you. Um, um, Aaron. So last, when I took over as presidency, so this is my first year. Um, and our entire board is new, uh, except for two returning. And we have a VP of programs. We have a VP of membership. And then we have a lot of committee heads to take up different responsibilities. But even some of our committee heads had moved on. We did the direct ask. I, don't, I didn't even know some of my new board members, but I knew their face. I knew they were personable. I knew their kids were involved in the PTA. So we just asked them and they said, uh, I've never done anything before. I don't know how to do this. And I said, guess what? Me neither. We'll figure this out together. And that's how they joined. So we are a elementary school of about 700. We are very diverse. We're title one and we have a great board right now. And we are totally figuring this out on our own because. <laughs> and you know, we are training uh, throughout summer, you're going to have a lot of opportunities to go through those training sessions of different positions. So state offers that county level, council level, we offer that. So you're going to yeah, have. An well, and I think the important thing that people need to remember too, is go to your officers at Fairfax County Council PTA, go to the people and ask the questions. Like I sent a lot of questions to Brett. I sent a lot of questions to Kara. Like, I don't know how to do this. Is this right? Are we doing this correctly? So should someone be doing this? And the past president kind of helped us along too. But as getting in new officers and getting in new committee heads, you know, we just recognize the parents that were, you know, set, having their kids involved and having, coming to the events we were doing. And our vice president of membership is the funniest. She's like, I just pay my dues every year and show up. And I'm like, 
great. Then you'll be perfect because you're talking to everybody all the time. So you're going to get us members. You're going to do a great job. So I, I think as Kara put in the chat, the direct ask, the direct ask, because I think people then feel noticed. They feel flattered. You thought about them and they feel more inclined to do it than having we just didn't do the nomination committee in the spring because, well, we kind of couldn't uh, with the quarantine and not being in school and no one had computers and it was just a mess. So absolutely. And also, I will I would also add that, you know, also a lot of the presidents get a lot of information about from the council and the district level. And whenever we have our general members meeting that the council has, they think that only the president can go to those meetings. Okay. No, it's open to everyone. You should have invite all of your board to come and join those meetings. So they will right. learn from that too. Right, and we have, we have a, our secretary is part of SEPTA and she does all of our special education stuff. So we pull from different areas so that we kind of spread the wealth. Hey guys, I just want to throw it out there that I would not be council president if it was not for the direct ask. When I saw the thing go out, I didn't apply for it. Um, I was direct asked by a few people. So that, that, pre that president position that's so hard to get is because most people don't feel like they're qualified to do the job. I don't feel like I'm qualified to be president of Fairfax County Council, but people asked me to do it. So those of you that are struggling with the president, don't discount that direct ask because there might be people that you could with that direct ask, they might go, oh, Oh, they think I can do this. I didn't think yeah. I could, but they think I can. Absolutely, one hundred percent. That's one hundred percent. Can I ask a quick question, please? Um, I would be curious of the folks that are on this call. How many are representing a high school? Show of hands. Is it one, two? I guess I am technically. Mm -hmm. Because, smaller number uh, yeah um i like the idea um certainly of the of the direct ask and i saw somebody in the chat put their sign in sheet um which we don't really technically have um although you know i'd have to talk to our technical team <laughs> Ahmed, to see if there's a way of seeing, you know, who had logged in and, and that type of thing. Um, but I, I think there's a real challenge and not just speaking for, um, for Mount Vernon High School PTSA and Sherry's on the line and Hamid's on the line, um, that there are so many com competing um, aspects Interest. at this level um, that you know, I, I, I appreciate all the, the, the points of folks that they have all this. We, we, we are not having anybody. I have a couple of folks um, that um, I think would be interested in helping out. Um, but again, they're, they have never participated before. So, um, and we don't have anybody for president next year. And so um, it's a struggle to encourage them to participate in whatever capacity they would be um, open to without somebody kind of man in the head there. And right. so um, I will definitely look um, at our you know, roll calls over these past meetings. Um, and we've had a decent showing, um, but um, we have reached out to our middle schools. I've reached out to, um, you know, through, through different avenues through the school to our both um, uh, our main feeder middle school and also another middle school that, you know, has some kids that come over. Um, and uh, it, it is not happening uh, for us. And so, um, if folks that, uh, and we struggle to have people on a committee. So it's not like we have a pool of people that I'm like, you could be, you know, you did a committee, you know, you get the general gist, you know, we can corral you on in there and we have a ton of information to support their transition and no one would leave them hanging endlessly. But anyway, 
I just was curious um, because it's a different, it, it is a definitely a different deal uh, at the high school level. Kitty, is your comment about that? Please. Yes, yes. To respond to Kristen, I, you know, you may be doing this, but one of the ways that we've been very effective, and I've been involved with this in prior years, but this year as president, I wasn't, is using the nominating committee. We try to, it's been a tradition at our school, so it was passed on to me the knowledge that we really try to go to um, find nominating committee members who represent each of our feeder elementary schools. So we, we branch out, you know, as much as we can thinking, you know, that way we'll be able to find the widest representation in our community from the different areas, you know, feeder schools in. And then we do outreach to our middle school as well by attending some meetings and putting in their newsletter, the information too. So that has really helped us, but it is hard work to, for sure, to get, because there are so many other um, activities and distractions that, that parents have, our athletic boosters, the different guilds for theater, chorus, you know, band, um, there's much, a lot going on. And um, it is hard to, to get, you know, to, to keep people interested in the PTA, which is really a general, you know, it's not as specific when your children are specializing, you know, and you want right. to support those activities, but we've been really fortunate and, and the nominating committee in that respect has helped us a lot to, to really get, get the groups in. And then the other thing I would say, going back to the president elect question earlier, our president, my president elect is here tonight, Claire Bradshaw. She's been like, we've been joined at the hip this year, trying to figure out it, as well as our past president who, who will be moving on as her daughter graduates this year. But we, again, been really fortunate to just kind of spread the work a little. And I think whenever you can do that, it helps people to be more confident. And, you know, I can take this on because it's not just me. I, I got, I've got somebody else, you know, that I can reach out to and get help from and run ideas by. So, yeah, no, I, I appreciate the, the ideas and, and, and the perspective. I'm actually on the nominating committee and I saw some comments there and I think Sherry responded. Our pyramid ambassador is Sherry Nachinani who's on here um, as well. And so um, for sure, and people have been very open in our middle school connections to spreading the word. Um, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure, you know, we may have to take a step back and, you know, do some other brainstorming of sorts, because it would be um, certainly a big loss if, if we didn't have things come together for next year. Um, and our group is always very small. Um, we don't have a big team. Um, and, what is your meeting um, attendance like? Actually, being virtual has improved our meeting attendance. Um, and um, typically in person, 10 ish, you know. And then um, we have had some good speakers this year. Um, and so we've had some good um, showings for that. Um, and so, and we have certain, you know, we've announced that. So we are getting, you know, participation, probably not elementary school participation, but we're getting. Yeah, ever will be, know, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we have been getting some good participation, good participation. Um, so I, I, I um, again, my, my career, my career is, is fun, more driven by sales for the most part. But so everybody, I think, does things for either hope for gain or fear, for fear of loss. Right. That's it. That's the motivating factors. Hope for gain or fear of loss. And if if it's difficult to convey the hope for gain um, to your families, uh, then perhaps fear of loss would inspire somebody to step up as well. So in your, I don't know how many meetings you have left, but if in your next meeting, rather than having a speaker, um, you kind of re do a recap of the year, the things you were able to take advantage of, the, the speakers you had, blah, blah, blah. And then simply all this will end if we don't have a president, treasurer and secretary for the next school year. Everything you've enjoyed, everything your kids enjoy, everything they've enjoyed so far, will simply cease to be if we can get one parent out of our entire community to step up. Sherry, please. Well, Larry, I'm a step ahead of you. I already <laughs> do. <laughs> it's been a challenge. Our school is a challenge outside of, of, of COVID. And so our board, I think we're burned out 
we, I can't do it again next year. You put your blood, sweat and tears in it and you can't do it. I can't do it again next year. Um, and I think Chris, Chris is in the same boat. We've been doing it. And so not only is it difficult because our parent body is apathetic, but our staff. So we have challenges coming from left and, and from right. Um, and so we've asked, We've done the direct ask. We've we've been advertising probably since December, January, just, just letting them know what's coming down. I did what you said. I had a little presentation on what we've done this year. Um, we kind of do that anyways as a recap to let people know what we've what we've been doing. We make a little presentation. Um, and so I I don't know. Part of it is the area that we're our school. Um, right. and so um I don't know. And it is going to be a loss. I think they're going to realize like we have these principal luncheons. We had one today. We have a new principal. That is because of the PTSA. I'm the one that asked her to do that today. It's not on her radar. Everyone that we've had, it is because I have asked her to do it. Um, so it is going to be, there's going to be a void um, unless somebody steps up. And I do, and Chris, we do a ton of work. Our other board members are MIA, they don't respond, they don't do anything. They'll show up for the executive meetings with the principals, but they don't help us with events. They don't have, help us with speakers. They don't help us with getting the teacher appreciation. They don't help us do anything. It's the two of us. It's a, just a two man show here. So Larry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna nominate you. Chris is my nominating committee chair. So I'm gonna nominate you <laughs> to be on my board next year. <laughs> so, well, in a similar tone, I was, and this is not diminishing at all what you are doing, but do you, do you think it would help in any way if um, one of us or uh, uh, attended a meeting and, and kind of re Because again, well, obviously we all have kids, that's why we're here, right? You keep saying the same thing to your kid over and over again, eventually they don't hear you anymore because it's just mom or dad saying it. Um, or it's just mom saying it and my wife hates this, and then I say the exact same thing and then they just snap right to it. So she's like, I've been saying it for 20 hours. I was like, that's be because you've been saying it for 20 hours, that's why it didn't work. So same idea. Again, it's sales, scared. sales, it's, it's a TO, it's a turnover, right? You need a TO. We'll be happy to provide a TO in your meeting if that, I mean, the second voice sometimes, and you'll be like, I've been saying it for three months, and then now you have seven volunteers. I mean, I don't know if the magic will happen, but we're willing to try. So this is Karen Olmstead. So, I mean, Sherry's, Sherry and the Sherry and Kristen have done a great job. We had such a momentum last year, right before COVID, that you know we had this Mount Vernon Legacy Group that started, which was a side group that really was working on getting the community together and helping promote that. And then COVID just like literally screeching halt for everything down in this area. And I, I, and I try to always be very positive. I think that we'll be able to get something going, Sherry. But we have to be able to get in person and maybe we come together with that group again and saying you know because it's going to have to be like some of the other person said you know it's like when i and i stepped up for president for woodley hills which i'm not doing a lot i'll be honest with you i'm just kind of there in name um but it's going to be have to be us asking specific individuals but i don't know some of those people yet for the freshmen from mount vernon because i'm going to be coming in as a freshman but i'll sure as hell you know I'll go out and I'll tap those people, but I have to be able to go up to and ask people. So I don't know if maybe we want to have a brainstorming session for at least our area. And I'm happy to participate in that. And you know, I can grab five or 10 people. So I'm happy to help with that. And I just wanted to jump in to say that um, while the spring, uh, May and June is the time that you want to hold your elections, if, if for some reason you have a position other than those three required, president, secretary, treasurer, if your vice presidents, you can't fill them, wait till the fall. I mean, when you have hopefully families coming back in or new families coming in and you know, you can hold an election for any vacancy, you know, in the fall. Um, don't, don't feel like you have to have every position filled uh, to be, you know, able to do your work. Of course, it puts more work onto those who are elected. But what you're trying to do, because we are in such a uncertain times, you haven't been able to meet 
your families. They don't know who you are. And, you know, once things do kind of uh, hopefully uh, ease up a bit, you know, that there will be better times to do that. But, you know, try to get through whatever, whoever you can get, you know, for this spring and to help at least carry it through. So come the fall, you'll have your membership campaign ready to go. You'll be able to put together a budget, the basic things, and hopefully plan some uh, family engagement events, you know, for the start of school. So. It's, it's hard, right? I mean, it's, it is uh, unprecedented and, um, there's a lot going on. And besides all this, there are real world concerns for a lot of families and people right now that have nothing to do with anything we're talking about right now. So that is the reality that we're in. Um, the only saving grace to that is that we're all in it. Um, nobody here is immune from it for the most part. To some degree, it's affected our lives. So I think that that, here's my, here's my optimism. Everything we're feeling right now, I, I expect it to be the exact deluge of the opposite once this breaks because there'll be so much desperation for activity and community involvement i i would say that my own neighborhood seems to be even closer through this because all we've had is each other so hopefully that will bear fruit as as we go forward with this uh it doesn't solve the immediate problem of right now um but one thing i do want to bring up before you about i'm for my thoughts where the question is um this doesn't solve right now, but I do want us all to think about, I guess, how we got to this point. Um, so theoretically, if we knew, forget to forget COVID, but if we knew on the first day of this school year that it was gonna be a problem on the last day of the school year, might we have done things differently in the beginning so that we were setting ourselves up for success towards the end? Um, by by increasing our level of outreach with our, our parents and our members that are, that come to meetings, right? Making sure that they're engaged, trying to find something for them to do and participate in with a direct ask for the small thing. Right? I don't need a president on um, August 3rd, but I do need somebody to run the spook fest. You wanna be on the spook fest committee? And then that person is now part of the environment, the team still part of it, and then they're building towards it. And again, this is not saying anybody's not doing that, but to make sure that we're, in, that we're wrapping our minds up, our arms around anybody that reaches their hand up at all, um, even the ones that make our life torture because they're complaining, I want that person involved because that variable could be our next officer. I don't know where it's going to go, but I want to grab all of them and wrap them all in so that they have some place to be. So that ideally, when this presents itself, I do have some sort of a pool to at least tap into to try and go towards this. Aaron. Oh, I didn't mean for you to stop talking. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> Well, kind of to what um, Debbie was saying, like waiting to the fall, because, you know, I was really thinking about this recently as we were trying to think about how to get some of our volunteer positions and committee head positions filled, because we didn't do as much this year as we would in a normal year. So we have a lot of vacancies, we have a lot of things on hold, and we have a lot of parents moving on because they're current sixth graders. Um, we always start our school year with a, our PTA meeting is a huge dinner where we just hang out for a while and chat. And it's a time to get to know the PTA board. It's a time to just get to know each other. Um, and that's how we get a lot of people signing up for positions. You know, we lay out our calendar, here's what we've got going on, here's where we need some positions filled. And from that, we start getting a lot of volunteers. Um, because this year we couldn't do our traditional PTA meeting and dinner, I kind of played with the restrictions that were given to us. And I went to a nearby church and did a food truck tailgate. So I could still bring people in and safely socialize and try to do the same kind of thing where we could chat with each other. We had a band, so people were hanging out, people were talking, people were still eating because food is the best way to be social. So we were in a parking lot, people were talking, and I could still try to say, 
hey, if you're interested in helping, here's what we need help with. Um, so, you know, it, sometimes we do have to wait for the fall. Being an anxious person as I am, I want to start the year knowing I've got everything lined up, but that's just not how it's going to be. Um, so I have to be patient and let relationships happen, let moments happen where we can have these conversations. We can introduce people to what the PTA is, what the school is, and kind of organically sometimes let people volunteer, let them step up. Absolutely. Kitty. And just well, to, I, I, I did want to say one thing about the fall. Remember, your bylaws state that um, an elected uh, officer will serve in their position until their successor is elected. So <laughs> just, just kind of remember that there is part of your bylaws that may help you get through a bad time. And uh, with, but that's not the ideal, but it has happened with a lot of PTAs. They couldn't get people in the spring. They knew they would have more opportunity in the fall. And, you know, they just kind of carried through, showed, you know, just kept going till they could get that first meeting of elections in, in whatever, August, September, something like that. But, you know, just, you know, hang in there. And, um, and, and like Aaron, I appreciate that. You know, we do, I'm like you, I want everything organized because then I can plan my year on my calendar. It, we're just not in, we're just not there anymore. We're just not in that good place anymore. We just have to be flexible and we have to just, frankly, we're all volunteers. We really just got to do the very best we can. And sometimes it's not as high a level as we set for ourselves, but that's okay. You just need to do whatever you need to do um, and, and get, get to that point to where things can actually fall into place a little bit better. So I didn't mean to interrupt whoever was coming next. So. Just, just, just kitty. Sure, no problem. No, I wanted to find out more about that food truck tailgate with a band. But um, what I wanted to say too, because I want to do that, <laughs> I want to go to one of those. I uh, I just wanted to say too that you know taking um, if, if just taking the priorities. What are those core things that you have to get done, especially when you're a small you know you know a, a small unit of just a few officers. You know, there are definitely things that are priorities, like the communication piece or the advocacy piece of it, or whatever it is that your families, your community identifies as those those really key things that you can do as an organization to add value. And then hopefully by then, you know, doing that, you can not be as overwhelmed. And uh, I know that's obvious to everyone, I'm sure. Um, easier said than done, but that definitely, you know, we, we kind of, uh, figured it out that way this past year with everything changing so much. What do we have to get done next? Okay. You know, and then making the decisions because we, you don't know whether you're going to be able to do that ethics day in May, you know, which, you know, was something on our calendar, but you did know that orientation was coming and we had to figure out a virtual situate, you know, way to, to solve that problem. So just the, the prioritization is really critical. Absolutely. Um, so we are, we are approaching an hour, and I am by no definition shutting anything down, but I know people have lives and everything, but it is your time. I will mention one last thing in case anybody doesn't want to ask is I will speak for, um, speak to the direct ask, and I will speak on behalf of both Hamid and Charles on this phone call that I can see is um, a lot of dads won't step into the role because of the opposite side, we don't feel like it's not our place. And that's unfortunate that it happens, but it does happen to a lot of dads in the community unless they're asked. Um, and I think that as a unit, we don't ask uh, dads, grandpas, uncles, big brothers to do enough. Um, and we put it all on the mothers that are already doing a lot. So I, I think that there is a wealth community there and they, they may not be your president necessarily, but uh, they may be your treasurer. I mean, I, two of my treasurers have been dads because um, they were accountants. So it was a natural, it was math. There was no people. 
They did the reports, gave the reports once in the meeting, and they didn't say another thing. But you know what? That's all they needed to do was count the beans. That's all they needed. That's all they had to do. Um, so that was fine. They handled some of the events. So please don't forget about that. Uh, Fifty percent of your parental population is that, and another percent of your population is the T in PTSA or PTA. Um, teachers can serve. Teachers are also parents often, um, and some of them are willing to. They don't want to over usurp the control of anything, but they are willing to do so sometimes. So, or they may know what parents want to, right? What parents can and cannot. Uh, Deanna. So my question is, and if it's not pertinent to everybody, please feel free to tell me who to follow up with, um, is so I didn't understand the part you said earlier about doing that virtual vote through a Google form. I would love to know what that's about because I was assuming I have to handle this on a Zoom meeting. Um, if I get multiple nominees. So I would, I, is there someone I could follow up with um, if no one else is interested in it? Yeah, you can follow up with, with any of us, I think. And any, some of, has anybody done one already this year that way? So Michelle has already. Uh, in a nutshell though, so on the Google form, you you can you build the, the survey basically in Google Forms. And it only goes up to the emails you want. By doing that, you're allowed to send it to just your, your membership body and there's no outside influence because it only is coming from them. And then it comes back into that same Google form and only X number of people can see the results. So you'll see who everybody voted for, but you really can't identify unless you ask for names anyway, unless you know everybody's email address. And then you just tally it up. So um, are you just sending the slate? Yeah, like you're sending, if there are officers on it and you can do it, it depends on how quickly you can do it. If you're slate, if you know your officer, your elections ahead of time, you can build it ahead of time. The only thing that could potentially be an issue is um, your PTA does allow for nominations from the floor. Right. Um, and that could happen. A Google form can be adapted relatively quickly. I can't say that I'm the fastest at it, but it can be done. Uh, Michelle, what was yours like? Call you on the spot here. How did you do yours? Um, we did take that nominations from the floor into consideration. So we announced that we were going to be doing everything online, if I'm remembering correctly. And we said, you have, if you want to nominate from the floor, you have between now and whatever time. And then we sent out another email after that that had the link with um, people who were running, which we ended up not getting any floor nominations, but okay. given you, that choice. You said, Michelle, you set a deadline for them to submit yep. their nominations. And Correct. this is what Larry and I were talking about last night with another nominating committee is that because we're in a virtual situation. There are technical you know, challenges to be sure you have a fair election and uh, you wanna have a secure election, right? So you don't want everybody voting and seeing your vote. It needs to be private. So um, having some, a deadline, even if it's two days before the election is fine. And then you're able to send out the link to that Google form to your membership list. Also, we had a question raised, well, what if I want to join the PTA the night of the election? Can I still vote? And, you know, that also presents some issues just with getting a list of members. So my suggestion and other PTAs have done this too, is to set a deadline for when membership uh, is accepted for that election. And, and again, it can be just a couple of days before, just so that you have a current list and, and those who are doing the technical part of it can have all the information they need. And, and I participated in the SEPTA's election. It was so easy. Our district annual meeting last year, we had a Google form uh, to where people could submit their votes and they had a couple of days to do it. You know, it wasn't because we only have one meeting, an annual meeting once a year for elect or every two years for elections, but you know, they had a time frame that they could vote. Uh, Virginia PTA just did that this um, in uh, March. You had a couple of days to vote. You know, so there's lots of different ways. Unfortunately, we don't have one way fits everybody because everybody has different virtual platforms. Do you, are you able to even know who's registered to come to your meeting? So you can send them a ballot. 
So that's another thing is just having a deadline for registering. And then of course you can still probably send a couple late ones, but you need a person dedicated to doing that. And whoever is looking at your, uh, your, your tally, your votes, the president needs to actually appoint a teller or two tellers who have access to that form. And then maybe they're not um, the principal or vice principal or the president. They are someone that's kind of independent so that they can report out. And every, especially in, it's mostly, this is really necessary for contested elections. That's the only, you know, if, if you only have one candidate, you could probably do a poll and just everybody vote yes or no. Right. You can vote on the slate as a whole. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, right. so thank you for that. So what I learned here is that I don't actually need to do the vote at the meeting. I can send out a ballot and whether you're at that meeting or not, you can vote on. Right. The you, don't have, you don't have to announce that your winnings at the end of the meeting. It can be tabulated. Okay. You don't want to say you want to have some sort of deadline, but then that have to be at the end of the meeting. Yeah. Okay, that's very helpful. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. So, Michelle, is that what you did? You sent it out to every member, right? Regardless did. of, yeah. of whether did. they were at that meeting or not. Okay. Correct. And the actually the the sort of ironic part is that I think with our bylaws we had to have a teller committee of three, and the Google form does everything for you. So we yeah. just had to have three people but, look at the form pretty much. But I will say that SEPTA was very clear on the entire process. Every time I received an email, it was very clear. So Michelle, what you guys did, and I'm sure Amanda maybe put that together. It was all Amanda. <laughs> so maybe sharing that with us because it is important that people feel they've received correct information. So when they vote, they know exactly what they're doing. And, and sometimes if we just kind of throw something at them, it, they won't understand it. And you, you don't want that to happen. But Michelle, maybe, I mean, I just think you guys were very efficient and it was very direct and you had no question about what you were doing. Yeah, <laughs> so. I can try to see if I can find anything really quickly that I can attach here and if not okay. i can follow up and send oh, it to yeah, you exactly. okay so yeah, i'm uh i everybody here does is here because you already do too much and so i'm going to let you go back to doing your too much without spending more time with us i do want to leave with one last one thank you all for being here thank you for everything you all do um i put my email address in the uh, chat uh if anything that i can help with in any way shape or form whether it's this related or not please reach out to me uh directly um uh, one second, Jennifer. I do see your hand raised. Sorry, Jennifer, go ahead. Please. So I just have one um, question. Um, we're in a boat where I'm not sure. I'm, we're going to do the plea and the, hey, we're not going to have any of this stuff next year. But I mean, I've talked with the board, with the principal, and I'm not sure we're going to have um, the volunteers mm -hmm. to continue next year. So is the recommendation to try to see if I can get the treasurer to stay on until the fall and then, you know, kind of use that clause from the bylaws um, yes. to keep it going or would it be that we become inactive I mean I'm kind of in the same boat as you Sherry I mean it, it's been three years and I'm, I'm tired <laughs> and I, right. you know I love my school and it's so sad but we have over 600 families I don't understand how there isn't you know two people one, that will step yeah. up that's always the weird part right I, I think so one mm -hmm. you, you can use that clause too we did talk about early, it's not ideal, but you can't flip positions. Like you, you just trade jobs on paper. That is an option of course, as well. Um, people's spouse can be the other officer, even though they don't actually do anything, but they're the name that's different. There are loopholes, so to speak. Um, but obviously that's not the, the real solution, but if you could that do that. Um, your old secretary, your old treasurer doesn't change over until after you finish the audit of the previous year anyway. So that's a little longer position there. Um, so it gives you a little bit more of a leg time on that particular one. Um, and then you can just have an election outside of it. I mean, if it has to happen, it has to happen. Um, that is one position I think would be more critical, obviously, because there's money involved. It is very important to do so. Um, I do get it. Um, but yeah, that would, but worst case scenario, yes, if everything dissolved, yes, that can happen. You can become inactive, but inactive is not a permanent thing. We've had PTAs or PTSAs go inactive and come back on um, for, 
a number of reasons. So that can be resolved. It's not the end of the world per se. Um, it's just not ideal, of course. And then sometimes that takeaway is it. Um, so that helps. Um, again, I want to hear about the night back. I, last thing I wanted to mention was um, I saw in the chat, but I want to mention as well that not just in COVID, but in general, we obviously a lot of our families are diverse, have a lot of different other needs and, and whatnot. And the, especially without being in person, the strain of uh, trying to get involvement is going to be difficult. Uh, with memberships, going to be difficult because the $12 membership may not seem like a lot, but it obviously can be a lot to, to a lot of people. So it is something to consider and to remember. Um, sometimes, uh, I don't know if your PTA has provisions for waivers. If that's something you do, then obviously that's, that's beneficial. Um, that community, those communities are particularly underserved in representation in the PTA. Um, quick story, I had a, a Spanish family that was, I asked them to be in the PTA. They didn't even know what it was. Um, then I started explaining to them in Spanish what the PTA was. And then three other families heard me speaking to them in Spanish. And then they came up and next thing I know, I had a whole group of families that spoke Spanish that were now talking and joining the PTA that never were included before because nobody spoke to them in a way they understood. Those kind of things, we miss sometimes, um, and they're they're in all of our everybody's in everybody's community, right? We're all around each other, so sometimes those officers are in places we don't even know, um, and make sure that we're tapping all those resources as well. Um, obviously, it's not the end. Uh, this never ends. This is PTA. This is how it is. You know, I have to get off this one. Get on another one. Actually, so you can call me. Uh, you can email me. Uh, we're around. Our goal next year, this coming year, our main mission is to make sure that all the Local units have more contact with us as the FCC PTA in general. Um, and I'm sure Kara will echo that as well. So hopefully you'll hear more from us, see more from us as the year goes on. Uh, and anyway, we can help uh, any conflicts. Please let us know that's what we're here for. Uh, with that, everybody can have your evening back. Uh, thank you for joining us and thanks for all your input. And uh, hopefully I'll talk to you all soon. Hey, thanks everybody. Thanks thank for you, all you're doing. You're all heroes. Remember that, right? Thanks, Bye Kara. Thanks. Michelle Cades, do you want to stay on? Okay. Do you need me, Kara? No, you can go. Michelle said she had to ask me a question. I had stopped recording, so I okay, think we're cool. good. Okay. Thank you all. See you all later. I think Bye it guys. still says recording, though. It, uh, it's, oh, it does. It might be okay. me, because I'm right. co-host.